Hi everyone, I'm Ben from Treehouse Theatre and today I'm in school because we're going to do something rather cool. We're going to make a film in a day. Yes, that's right. But it's not going to look like a film you'd normally see in the cinema or something. It's going to be more like a filmed play, but we're doing it today. There are four quarters of this play. Each bit is I'm going to call an act, all right? Now, each of you will be in one of four groups and each of these groups is doing one of these acts. So you at some point will come down to me in the hall and while you're there, you're going to sort out this quarter of the play and we'll film it so that then in the end, we'll have four little films, one for each group. They'll get put together by your teachers and you'll be able to watch them back as one whole thing. When you come down to me in the hall, you'll be given somewhere to sit. You will be given a part and you might be given a prop or something like that. And basically we'll then with each of you go through everyone in your group making sure you all know what you're doing so you'll walk the whole thing through try all, all your, your words out and all the actions you have to do so and then straight away immediately after we've gone through the whole thing as a rehearsal we'll then just run the whole th thing through without stopping all right i'll be there to remind you what you've got to do and all that stuff we'll just go for it mistakes and everything and get it filmed by the end of the day we'd have filmed all four groups doing all four quarters of the play. Your teachers can then put the four bits together and you'll have a chance to watch them all back in the right order and see the, the finished thing. Before you come down and see me, here's a few top tips for making the film today. First of all, it's really important that you face front, okay? Now there's the, of, there's the occasional thing that will happen that will mean you'll need to turn and face towards me or something towards the back of the stage. But generally speaking, unless I say anything different, you need to look straight out ahead not the camera but just out at the people who are watching on the mats in front of you and uh, and say your lines to them even if you're talking to someone else on stage next to you you still need to say the lines out front so that we can see your face while you're in the shot while you're in the film um, it's also important that you do this so that we can hear you properly you need to project your voices and really speak up so we can hear everything you say because you were telling a story today and your words, the words that you say, they matter just as much as anything I say because it all adds up to us making sense of the story that we're telling. So all your words matter, let's make sure we hear them. Secondly, it's really important that you stay in shot. Now that means the bit that the camera can see of the stage. Now, we would probably have marked the edges of where that is on stage, maybe with a bit of tape or something, so you know what line you can't go out of. Now, it's important that you stay within those lines or you're not going to be visible in the film. So uh, make sure you're wherever else I put you, and I will give you somewhere specific to stand. Um, if you're moving around or going from one place to another, or even if you just forget where you're supposed to be, at least make sure that you're in the shot. Now, conversely, if you're not supposed to be in the shot, let's make sure you're not. If you're sitting down on the mats watching, don't stand up in front of the camera. Um, if you need to leave the room for any reason, you're gonna to have to kind of crawl underneath where the camera can see and get out somehow without crossing a, a, in front of the stage or in front of the camera, all right? Also, it's very important that the audience can focus on the film and what's the, what they're supposed to be seeing rather than being distracted by anything else. So while you're watching the play, just get into it. Just enjoy watching what you're watching. Um, and don't chat to the people around you while you're doing it, all right? We don't need any commentary from the audience. We just want to see what's going on on stage, all right? And it's also important during these times at the moment that we're aware of a couple of other safety things. Firstly, if I give you a prop, it's just for you. No one else is allowed to use it. You're not allowed to pass it to anyone else. No one else is allowed to play with it. So if you see someone's prop lying about, just leave it there. And uh, if you've got a prop, look after it and don't let anyone else play with it, all right? So we just keep one prop per person and, um, and that'll be fine. Also, um, you're supposed to stay a good two steps away from me, all right? So keep at least two steps away from me because we're not in the same bubble. It's also, well, actually, it might help you if you just imagine that I stink. And if you came too close, you wouldn't enjoy it very much. Um, just do that, just pretend I smell, okay? Now, we need to talk about cue cards. You're not expected to know your words off by heart today. You're gonna to have little cards with your words on so that you can just read the words that you need to say, all right? Everyone's gonna be the same. It doesn't matter that everyone can, can see these cards when you're being filmed because it's what everyone will expect and it's still gonna be fun anyway, all right? Now, you need to know how these work, so I'll show you what they look like. 
So I've got a couple on here. This one here is just a, a short, easy one. So we'll start off with this so you can see the basics. Now you can see there's some gray writing and some black writing. Okay, let's move it a little bit closer. All right, gray writing and black writing. Now a cue in theater means the line just before something happens. It could be the line just before somebody says something, for example, and that's what's happening here. You've got the gray bit there is the cue and this bit here, the bit in black, is what you have to say. So you're listening out for the gray bit. You're not gonna read this out loud. Someone else is gonna say that. And when, the, when that has finished, you then have to come in and talk, if this was your card. You can see this is for a character called Swamp Hide, all right? Because you can see the name of the character is written there above the line. Now you don't need to say the name of the character, all right? It just tells you who's speaking. It would be silly if you did, wouldn't it? It'd be like me saying, Ben, hello. Ben, can I have a cup of tea, please? Ben, what, you, you see what I mean? You don't say the name of the character, you just say what's written underneath it. So if this was you, you'd be listening for Alfred here, saying all this stuff in grey, which finishes off with the line, Mr. and Mrs. Swamp Hyde, thank you again. And then you would say, it's an honour, mighty king. And then that's that bit finished. It doesn't mean you sit down straight away. It doesn't tell you what you have to do around what you're saying. It just tells you literally what your words are. Okay, so you'll need to uh, imagine that this is fitting into some actions as well that you'll find out about at the time. Now, uh, this card over here, this is a different character in the same scene. And it's a little bit more complicated because this, this person's just got a bit more to do in the way, way of saying things. And there's two boxes here as well. We'll come back to that in a minute. Two red boxes. Now, she's in the same scene. So she's got Alfred doing this bit here. Then she's got her actual cue, which is Swamp Eye, saying the line we just talked about. And then she has to say her bit here, but mighty or not, where are we putting out the piggy poo? You watch my cakes, don't let them burn. There's her line there. And there's a little bit more to say what happens after that. Now, because she's got two boxes, that means that she's in two separate bits. There's something that happens in between this bit and this bit that isn't shown on the card. So after that bit's happened, other people are gonna say stuff. All right, blah, 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 blah. People are saying these, doesn't matter. She's not saying anything yet. She's listening out for this cue here. As soon as she hears this line at the top of the second box, Mrs. Swamp Hide, you're back. She then has to do this, the rest of the stuff on the card. All right, she says that. So, so other people say that, and then she says a line at the end. All right, I hope that makes sense. The only thing you might notice is, is that there's some lines here that have brackets around them and they're in italics. That's because they're not actually lines, they're stage directions. They're things you have to do instead of things you have to say. All right, in this case, it says re-entering there, which means coming back onto stage. So she doesn't say that, she just does it. All right, so just be aware that you might get the odd card that does that. I hope that's all clear. The film in a day that we're going to do today is called Ancient Egypt, History's Mystery, because it's about ancient Egypt and what a mystery it is. It's basically about this guy called Ned Nitwinkle, whom I'm gonna play. Ned Nitwinkle is obsessed with ancient Egypt to the point where he really wants to know everything he can about it. He's got lots of books, but he's read them all and it's just not enough. So he goes to this secret society who apparently know all about this sort of thing. And in order to join them, he has to drink a potion and then answer four questions about some artifacts. Now, if he gets these questions wrong, this potion is gonna make him get flung back in time to ancient Egypt. And the only way he can get back to the present day again is to find out the answers to the four questions. Each time he finds out an answer, he moves a little bit closer back towards the present day. So you can see how this is gonna end up being, right? He's gonna end up having to go to different bits of ancient Egyptian history, find out an answer to a question, and then you can move on to the next bit, all right? Now, the reason that this is quite a good way of doing it is because there's an awful lot of ancient Egyptian history more than two and a half thousand years of it, which is like so much that we can't even quite get our heads around it. And actually there's a lot of ancient Egyptian history that we know very little about because the evidence for it and what happened has just been destroyed. Tombs have been robbed. Um, so lots of stuff that might've been buried with people that would give us clues doesn't exist anymore. Um, and so we really are looking at four bits of ancient Egyptian history that we do know something about. Uh, from the archaeological evidence that we've been able to get. Now we're going to do a vocal warm-up. So we're getting your voices ready. And we're just getting you kind of in the right frame of mind as well to come and do what you're going to do. Now it's very important, like I said, to speak up nice and loud. So first of all, let's just think about the technique for that. Now here, underneath your ribs, 
like that as your ribs going down like that. If you put your hand just underneath there, just a, bit, a little bit lower than the view of your ribs, underneath your hand inside your body there is a big sheet of muscle that goes all the way through like this, it's like, almost like dividing your, your body in half inside. It's called your diaphragm. And when you breathe in, if you, if you try this yourself, take, so if you keep your hand here, take a deep breath right down into your belly, not just into your lungs, but right down through into here. You can feel your hand like being lifted away as, as your tummy tightens up underneath that, all right? And then you breathe out. You should feel your hand go down as the air comes out. Now if I do it side on, you might be able to see better. Take a breath in. Fat boom. Breathe out. Skinny bit. <laughs> I wish. Anyway, um, so that's what you're doing. You're using your diaphragm to get lots of breath. Now you can hold loads more breath down here than you can up here. That's why you're doing it. Then you can use this big muscle to push that air out. The more air you've got down in there, the louder you can do it. Because you, just more puff makes more noise. All right. So take a breath into here one more time. And out. Now we're going to do the same again, but this time we're going to make a sound. When we make the sound, we'll make it again and again and again, pushing with our diaphragms to make the noise come out. And, and the way we're doing it will actually make your, your diaphragm go up and down like this as we're going. So keep your hand there and check you can feel it bouncing off your tummy like this. So take a breath in. Now go, ha, like that. Now keep going, ha, ha, ha. Good, stop. All right, now from that same place, take another breath in and say, hello, Ben. Like that, let's hear you. And again, take another breath. Hello, Ben. Very good. Okay, now you've got your voices loud. You need to make sure they're going to be clear as well, which means you need to articulate what you're saying by moving your mouth properly to get into the right shapes to make the sounds. So uh, let's get this all warmed up around here. Go Stick your tongues out. Good. Now get your hands and put them on the side of your face like this and give yourself a good face massage like this. Ready? Keep going. Keep going. Lovely. When you're ready, let go. Let your face go all floppy and then go. Nice. Now say b, p, t, b, p, t. Good. B, p, t, b, p, t. With me. B, p, t, 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 b, p, on the end of your tongue goes zzz. Now put those three together like this. Good, right. Now we're going to do a tongue twister. It's one you know, so I don't have to teach it to you so much. Um, but I want you to really concentrate on what you're doing with your mouth. When we make an S sound, make sure it's an S like, like this, a big smiley S. When you make a shush sound, really stick your lips out, shh, like that, all right? It'll help you to keep in rhythm. The rhythm of those difficult sounds goes like this. It goes shh, s, s, shh, on the s, shh. So I wonder from that if you can guess what the tongue twister is, all right? Just try doing just that with me for a minute. Shh, s, s, shh, on the s, shh, and again, shh. On the s, last time for luck. Sh, s, s, sh, on the s, sh. Nice. So now we're going to do the tongue twister, starting off really slowly and gradually speeding it up, and see how fast we can get. All right. So she sells seashells on the seashore. 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 Well done, give yourself a clap. Very, very good indeed. 
Lovely, okay, only one more thing to say. Now I know you're all feeling pretty buzzy and excited and you just want to come down and do this film in a play thing like, and, you, and, and you're feeling like, yeah, 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 excited and stuff, that's great. But I just need to take a deep breath. Right, try and focus that energy, all right? So that when you come down, you can use it to really listen, really concentrate, find out what you've got to do without chatting and getting overexcited with your friends because we don't have very much time to do what we've got to do. We've got to make sure you guys know what you're up to so you can do the best job of it you can. Then we'll, we'll run the whole thing through and make it really good, all right? So come on, guys, I'll see you very soon. Let's make a movie. <laughs>